So how will the Biden administration move forward on its agenda in the face of a court determined to stall it? Well, joining me now to discuss in her first interview as the president's domestic policy advisor is Nira Tandon. Welcome to you, Nira. Uh, let's start. How is the administration now shifting its strategy, especially when it comes to navigating uh, the diminished morale, if you will, in the wake of these decisions? Well, the president spoke directly to this. He strongly disagreed with these decisions, as he pointed out on Thursday. These these decisions this week on affirmative action, other issues, are really without precedent. He's the, the These decisions are ones in which the, in, the Supreme Court itself is refuting decades of precedent and really going against the majority of Americans. And so uh, he tasked us well ahead of these decisions to prepare to prepare and ensure that we had a strong response. That is why on Thursday, the president outlined his views on, on how colleges and universities should go forward. Um, he had uh, specifically tasked the Department of Education and Department of Justice, as well as laid out his own views that colleges should not, colleges should not, and corporations should not retreat from diversity. Diversity is important to this country. It's a founding principle of our democracy. And it would be wrong, absolutely wrong. There is no excuse for turning back on diversity. And that is what the president laid out. He put forward his own, what he recommends to colleges, to use adversity as a standard, really look at income, um, geography, as well as the particular hardships in students are facing, including racial discrimination. So he really thinks that this is a, this is a time for us to move forward, to not be held back by this court, and to ensure that we still have paths to ensure that we have diverse leadership uh, coming out of our colleges and universities. So, Nira, a, a couple questions about what the president did actually lay out, specifically as it relates to um, the administration's guidance, if you will, forthcoming guidance to schools and to, but also corporations in the private sector. What are the conversations that you all are having with the private sector? Because uh, this this has far-reaching implications. It's not just college admissions. We are talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion um, initiatives within corporations. We are talking about potentially programs that recruit at HBCUs and minority-serving institutions as well. Mm -hmm. Look, we've been in good conversation with allies for months, and we also recognize that there has been a concerted attack on diversity, equity, and inclusion practices. There is a concerted attack um, aimed at corporations, aimed at universities, that this is part and parcel of an effort to really turn back the clock. So that's why the president specifically said on Thursday that this should not be an excuse. We've engaged with universities, we've engaged with civil rights allies, we've engaged with corporations and other leaders. We should remember that some of the largest companies in the country um, filed an amicus brief on behalf of affirmative action. Also, many former generals uh, filed an amicus brief in, in support of affirmative action as well, because they recognize that having diverse employees, diverse military, is important to our our goals as a country. And so, uh, as, as again, as the president said, he, we should not use this. There is no reason to use this as an excuse to go backwards. Uh, companies should not fall uh, uh, fall victim to the attacks of the right on diversity, um, and that really there's a lot of grounds to move forward. Nira, in the president's interview with Nicole Wallace, uh, he stayed consistent in his opposition to expanding the court. He, he warned that it would uh, even politicize it. But isn't the court already politicized, so the damage is already done? Well, I completely understand, and the president completely understands the frustration with the court. And, of course, he's voiced it himself. Yesterday, he talked about how he thought the decision on student debt was wrongly decided, that this is a court that does it does act uh, time and time again uh, against the views of the majority of Americans and really pushing our rights backwards instead of forwards. So we appreciate, and he appreciates the frustration. He does recognize that— and has argued that there is a there is a significant downside to efforts to reshape the court that 
you know, we have to understand those consequences. But, you know, we all recognize that there is a, there is that frustration. And we hope that we've seen some decisions of this, this cycle uh, or this session of the court where they did seem to adhere a little bit more to precedent and to stare decisis. And uh, we hope that, w that the court itself will recognize how out of step and how unpopular it's become by being so out of step with the majority of Americans. You, Mira, I just think about the fact that next term, we know that the justices are going to be deciding another wave of consequential cases. Uh, one of those cases will actually include whether people who are under restraining orders for domestic violence can keep firearms. So I, I think it does beg the question, is there any Supreme Court reform that the president is, is willing to consider? Maybe not ready well, to endorse, know, but is he willing did... to consider any reform? <laughs> Uh, you know, the president had a, a Supreme Court commission, a commission on the federal courts, and they laid out a variety of ideas. Of course, the president will always examine the facts and look at policies. Uh, the courts are a really critical component of our democracy. I think this is a very hard issue to balance. And so I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't forestall the option that, you know, there would be steps we take down the road. But I have to say, just clearly, the president's view is at this time, um, there are grave consequences to weakening a judiciary. That is a that is an important part of democracy going forward, and so that is an issue he we all have to balance. And you know he believes that the best the best option would be for the court itself to recognize that when it upends precedent, as it did on this on the in its decision on affirmative action, forty five years of precedent, mm. it weakens itself in the eyes of the country. Before I let you go, Nira, uh, the, one of the other things that the Supreme Court weighed in on this this week was, again, this hypothetical made-up case of a web designer. And I did not know that the court trafficked in hypotheticals. Uh, in the wake of that ruling, what will the White House be doing to insulate LGBTQ plus folks from further discrimination? Uh, the court has signaled in many different ways that uh, they are essentially— there, there are people who are, who are concerned that Obergefell is on the line the landmark decision mm -hmm. that uh, codified same-sex marriage. This is, this is a time where we also recognize that the experience of LGBTQ Americans is uh, many are feeling under attack. Conservative politicians are uh, launching attacks across, uh, across the country. There have been over 500 pieces of legislation filed that really target uh, LGBTQ Americans and state legislatures across the country. That is why earlier this month, the president outlined a series of initiatives to protect the LGBT community, tasking the Department of Justice to have a really um, DOJ-wide initiative to protect LGBTQ Americans. They've DOJ Department of Justice has uh, actually been engaged in litigation, litigation uh, that has borne fruit in, in really uh, striking down laws that are really focused on taking away rights from LGBTQ Americans, some at laws that are really targeting um, the transgender community. So the president uh, will do everything he can to ensure that we protect all Americans. And it is unfortunate that the Supreme Court, which used to be a defender of equal protection, has become a bulwark against it. Mm. All right. Mayor Tandon, thank you very much for your time. I look forward to chatting with you again very soon. Appreciate it.